Please join me for our opening prayer. As we gather here in the shelter of your protection, we thank you for everything we have. We ask that you will strengthen us, restore us, and inspire us with your love. Lord, would you fill us with your peace so that as we walk forward, we would shine your love and grace to others. We ask that you would be a light, that we would be a light for all that we encounter, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, my name is Pamela Browning. I'm the Director of Children's Ministries here at Nicholasville United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are joining us here today for our online service. I have a few announcements before we get started. Um, while things look a little bit different here at NUMC, um, stewardship and ministry, ministry and missions still continue, uh, though it does look different. Under these circumstances, you can give online or through snail mail. If you'd like to give online, go to our webpage, which is www.numcky.org. And at the right, top right of the webpage, click the Give Online link. That will take you to a secure webpage where there are different options for how you can give. Um, we will not be doing our Sunday drive through offering today. Our call to worship today is Psalm 103, 1 to 5, 19 to 22. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Well, we invite you at home to continue to worship with us as we sing. Let's worship our God this morning.
love could remember no wrongs we have done omniscient all knowing he counts not their sum thrown into a sea without bottom or shore our sins they are many his mercy is so tender is calling us home. He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the of kindness he lavished on us his blood was the payment his life was the cost we stood beneath the debt we could never afford our sins they are many his mercy is more praise the song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name of all every other name Jesus the only one who could ever save worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you
And all of God's people said, Amen and Amen. Friends, I am Pastor Wade. It is good to be with you. Uh, today, we are online only. I'll explain that here in just a minute. But uh, very thankful for uh, our worship and tech team and our special musicians who came in to help lead worship this morning. Um, earlier this week, uh, the governor of Kentucky reached out to several church leaders across the state, including our own bishop, Bishop Leonard Fairley, asking that churches uh, refrain from in person uh, worship gatherings this Sunday and next Sunday, and uh, we have decided to comply with that request. So uh, where we have been uh, live, in person, limited numbers, and online, today we're only online. So we're glad you're joining us uh, for online worship today. We hope to get back to in person, hopefully sooner than later, but we'll have to wait and see. We'll kind of go week by week. What we're going to do in the next few moments is prepare our hearts uh, for a prayer time. I want to share just a couple of things with you as an invitation to our prayer time, and then I'll lead a little prayer. Hopefully you can pray with me, and then we'll say together the Lord's Prayer to end out our prayer time today. I um, just want a word for folks here in the Nicholasville community. Um, Alice Lawson Hager, uh, she passed away earlier this week, and so we lift up prayers for the family, and just lifting them into our prayers right now. We also have some folks in our congregation who are undergoing some medical tests and medical treatment, and so uh, we want to lift up uh, Ron Allen and his family, and also Margaret Ritter and her family. Uh, in our own uh, region here in Jessamine County, there have been uh, numbers, uh, COVID-19 positive test case numbers going up, and uh, people connected with our own congregation. I've talked to a handful of folks this week who say they might have been exposed. So we're praying for many people uh, right here in our own community, in our own church, who, uh, who possibly uh, could have been exposed. So prayers for them. And, uh, and also, um, we've talked about this as a staff here at church, and, and maybe some of you have sensed this already, but there's just a, a great heaviness upon the hearts and lives of some people. And I'll give you an illustration of that. Earlier this week, we had a message, a phone message, on the church office uh, answering machine. And it was a young woman. I'm, I'm guessing it was a young woman. I couldn't really tell. She didn't leave her last name, and she didn't leave a callback number, but she just listed several people asking us to pray for them because they are sick, they're hurting, they're going through a difficult time. And as we talk to people, as we listen to people, we know there's a lot of this happening here in our community. So I just want to lift up names like Marilyn and Vicki and, and Sandra and many, many other people who are just feeling just kind of the heaviness and the weight of life right now. And maybe, maybe you're one of those people we want to lift you up in prayer today as well. The good news is we have a God who hears our prayers, and even when we don't have uh, the words to express what's going on in our lives, God hears the cries and the groans of our hearts. So we're invited to come to God and just connect with Him in a moment of prayer time together as His people. So for the next few moments, I'm going to invite you, let's prepare our hearts, let's, uh, let's bow our heads, and let's enter into the presence of Almighty God. Go before the throne of grace and pray together in Jesus' name. Friends, this morning, would you join me as we pray together in the name of Jesus? Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we love you. And we celebrate you and we praise you on this day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. And thank you for your care. Lord, wherever we are at today, physically, wherever we are at today emotionally, whatever we're facing this season of life, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to recognize deep in our hearts that you are with us. We are not alone. We pray, Lord, you would remind us that you are truly present in our moments of difficulty and pain. Lord, that you want to ease our burdens, that you assure us of your presence and your love, that your steadfast love endures forever. And Father, that we have a hope, and that hope is none other than Jesus Christ. Today, we cast down before you 
our fears and our doubts, our burdens and our anxieties. Today, Lord, we confess before you that you are God and we are not, that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And Lord, that under your name, every creature in heaven and on earth would bow before you. Today, Father, we ask for your light to cut through the darkness. We ask for your grace, Lord, that we would know what you would have us to do. We ask for your wisdom, Lord, to help us from all false choices. And we ask, Lord, that you would keep our path straight before us and help us to walk faithfully, following where you lead. Heal us and restore us. Comfort us and strengthen us. Protect us and remind us of your great love. All these things we ask and all these things we offer back in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we take time now to remember the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray when together they prayed by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. searching every day in quest of something new but I have found the living way the path of pleasures true I've discovered the way of gladness I've discovered the way of joy I've discovered relief from sadness Tis a happiness without a door. I've discovered the fount of blessing. I've discovered the living word. Twas the greatest of all discoveries when I found Jesus. I've discovered the way of gladness. I've discovered the way of joy. I've discovered relief from sadness. Tis a happiness without a I've discovered the fount of blessing. Let's hear God's word. Today's scripture reading is from John 17, 11 to 24. 
And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete <clears throat> in themselves. Excuse me. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their world, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Pam, for sharing that reading. That's kind of a tricky passage to read. That's kind of a tricky passage, isn't it? There's a lot of phrases you have to kind of work on there. As, as I was reading over that passage uh, several times this past week, I noticed that the word one, O-N-E, comes up a lot. And in my version of the Bible, I think it shows up ten times. And uh, a couple phrases that show up again, one phrase that shows up twice is that they may be one as we are one. That shows up two times in that passage. And then another passage says that we all may be one. There, there's something going on here about the power of connection, the power of us being bonded together, us with God, kind of vertically speaking, but also us with each other, connecting with God and connecting with one another. That's kind of what's driving a lot of these words that Jesus is sharing here in this passage. Friends, let's talk about this, but first, would you pray with me again this morning? Almighty God, we love you. We thank you for this day, a day of worship and joy and celebration. Thank you for music that stirs our hearts. Thank you for your word that feeds our souls. Lord, in these moments, we pray that we might be drawn closer to you. Lord, we might be comforted, and we might be a little convicted too, Lord, that uh, we might draw even closer to you, and Lord, rest in your peace and in your arms. All these things we ask in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ, and all God's people said, amen. I don't know about you, but I've been enjoying this really hot weather the last couple of weeks, hot and humid and steamy. Whew kind of get the sweats going, right? Uh, I was thinking about this time of year, and, and several years ago, probably 30 years ago, uh, I was home from college on summer break for a few weeks, and it was about this time of year, about this kind of weather, really hot and humid, really steamy, and uh, my family, bless their hearts, had this idea that they were going to rent a 20-pound uh, jackhammer and a big generator air compressor trailer that you would pull on a truck to our house, and me and my brother were going to jackhammer up about half of our two-car garage. You see, there was a crack that had formed in the middle of the garage, and the back of the garage was kind of sinking down a little bit, and it was just kind of an awkward, bad situation. So my parents decided that me and my brother would spend a Friday and a Saturday jackhammering up half of our garage, picking up all the concrete, wheeling it back around the house, filling in a low spot, and eventually putting dirt on there and kind of landscaping. This was a two-for-one project, as it turned out. 
Well, it took us a while to figure out how to use I've never used a jackhammer, have you? It's, it takes a little practice. My shoulders and my arms are still shaking just thinking about I think I shook for three nights after that. Like, I go to sleep like I was moving. It's actually a lot of fun. What we discovered after two days of jackhammering up the concrete and hauling it out of the way was uh, we had a mess on our hands. Um, it turns out my dad called some contractors, and in particular some, some foundation contractors, and they dug some holes down deep in the garage near the, near the walls of the, the back of the house, and they found that there was a crack in the foundation. That turns out when the builders built the house many years earlier, uh, the, the footers of the foundation were put in perfectly all across the back of the house, except in one spot. In one spot where there should have been a footer, turns out there was this huge rock, this big rock, and for whatever reason, they chose not to get rid of the rock, but they just built the house on the rock. I guess that seemed like a good idea. But over the years, as the house settled, uh, that rock became kind of like a wedge, and it kind of cracked the bottom of the house and the foundation. And what was happening was, was the back corner of the house was slowly kind of pulling away from the rest of the house and sinking. Now, that sounds like a huge problem. They fixed it. It was really cool how they fixed it. They dug these big holes and put these jacks, these mechanical jacks in there, and raised it back up to level, and they sealed it all back in with concrete and fixed all. It was awesome, right? But it turns out we didn't have a garage floor problem. We had a foundation problem. Interesting, huh? One thing <laughs> that we didn't know at the time led to a huge other problem. One was a symptom of the other. If you've ever built a house or bought a house, when the inspection time comes, one of the first things they look at is the foundation, right? You can't have a good house if you don't have a good foundation. And as we found out in that house many years ago, uh, the foundation was a little lacking. and we, we paid for it literally many, many years, many years later. Jesus talks about this idea of building your house on a good foundation in uh, Matthew chapter 7. He talks about this idea of, I'll summarize, you can read it for yourself, Matthew 7, beginning with verse 24. Jesus says, if you listen to my words and build your life upon me, it's like building your house on a solid rock. But if you don't listen to my words, don't build your house upon me. It's like building your house on the shifting sands. And when the storms of life come, and we all know that they come eventually, the, the, the shifting sand house will be washed out and it'll crumble and fall down. Jesus is basically saying we've got to build our lives on a good foundation. Spiritually, he is that foundation that we as believers build our lives on. Now, emotionally, relationally, we also need to be building foundations with other people. And, and the foundational connection, the foundational bonding, basically that, that's relationships, right? We have relationship with God. That's a foundation vertically. But we have to have relationships, connections with each other. And that's kind of that horizontal relationship, right? You see, no matter how good you might be at accomplishing tasks, no matter how good you might be at doing things, at getting things done, at producing, that doesn't make up for the need that we all have to be in relationship, right? Relationship, by definition, means we need to be with others, right? Not just doing things for others, but giving and receiving from others, right? That's that bonding. That's that glue. That's that connection. That's that foundation that the scripture is talking about as well. And here's the thing, if you've ever wondered why in these difficult days you're facing anxiety, there's fears, uh, addiction problems are, are creeping up, loneliness, whatever it might be, is it possible that part of your foundation, that relational connection between God and you and between others and yourself, is it possible that foundation might be cracked just a little bit? Hold that thought. We'll come back to it. Well, let me give you some just kind of real-life examples um, from, from some studies that have been done in the lives of, of people, of kids, of youth. Imagine a baby, a cute, little, adorable, innocent infant. So you feed the baby, give the baby all the physical needs, that you, you meet those needs, but if you don't have a strong bonding connection with the baby, if there's not a strong bond between the parents and the child, what scientists see over time is this. That child, while physically healthy, doesn't develop quite as fully as other kids that have that strong emotional bond with other family members. For example, the, the brains are just a little bit underdeveloped. 
the body size, the weight, is just a little bit underweight, underdeveloped. The immune system is good, but just a little bit behind where other kids might be, right? That they get sick more often. So he healthy physically, but they need that bonding, that connection, that person-to-person -person bond to be fully physiologically healthy. Isn't that interesting? Or you think about a kid, maybe a, a teenager, who's been in and out of foster homes, in and out of institutions, off and on for all of their life, up to, say, 12, 13, 14 years old, and then you, you bring them into a new setting. Maybe you, you adopt or foster them, and you notice they begin acting out, and they're rebellious, and they don't function maybe the same way other kids might. Well, it turns out when social scientists do, do, do scans and do tests on kids like this, they, they find that there are parts of the brain that aren't as developed as another kid who might have more healthy and regular and long-term relationships. In other words, that, that bonding, that connection is, is huge for our development physically as we grow up. I was reading this just the other day, this blew me away. So let's not talk about kids for a second, let's talk about elderly. Recently there's been some kind of sad findings that have come out in our own nation about the COVID pandemic and the elderly. So, of course, you think folks who are up in years m might have physical health conditions that if they got COVID, if they were tested positive, that might be more difficult for them to survive. And certainly there are numbers that bear that out. But that's what I'm talking about. Turns out there's several people, elderly folks, who otherwise are healthy, but they're dying. And Gallup Research reported this the other day. They're dying from loneliness. They're not connected to their families. They're not connected to their neighbors like they used to be. So imagine an elderly person maybe who's in their home and they can't have visits like they did before. Or maybe in an assisted living facility or a nursing home and they can't see their kids or their grandkids or their, their neighbor down the hall like they, like they used to. And there's actually now data, quantifiable data, showing that there are elderly folks otherwise healthy who are dying during the pandemic but not from the actual virus. <laughs> They're dying from loneliness, this lack of connection. You see, we are made in such a way where we need to be in relationship with God and we need to be in relationship with one another. And when those pieces are missing, the foundations of our life begin to crack and we, we have some problems. So, so what does this have to do with our lives today? I'm glad you asked. Well, think about this. You know, during this time of pandemic, these many weeks, that things have been really different in our lives and in our, in our nation, we've all been experiencing more physical isolation than we're used to. Now, if you're an introvert, you're not minding this so bad. Hey, this is okay, right? More me time, right? If you're an extrovert, this can be really hard, right? You're not seeing people like, uh, like maybe you once did before. But let's go beyond the physical for a second and talk about the emotional, the, the spiritual, the psychological. Many of us are finding ourselves not just physically isolated, but emotionally isolated, psychologically isolated. We, we, we feel alone, and that's having an impact on our overall health, not just spiritually, but other parts of our lives as well, right? I said this last week, let me say it again this week. Many of you, many of us, many people right now are in a giving capacity. You're, you're leading somebody else, you're managing a family, you're leading a business, you're giving care to an individual, maybe a family member who's younger than you, maybe someone older than you. But a lot of us are in this giving role, this giving capacity. And on the one hand, that is great. But many of us who are doing all this giving are not taking a lot of time to also receive, right? We're, we're pushing on the gas, but we're never really pushing on the brake. And over time, our tanks become empty. It's hard to function, right? If our tank is empty, it's hard to function if our hearts are empty. Th think about the human heart for just a second. I'm, I'm not a cardiologist, but you, you know this, right? Our hearts are designed in such a way where two things have to be happening at the same time. Uh, on one level, there's got to be blood flowing into the heart all the time. There's got to be an inflow into the heart, right? And at the same time, there's got to be an outflow, blood going out of the heart. Our, our bodies are designed, our hearts are designed in, in such a way that both of these things have to happen at the same time, right? If blood doesn't flow into the heart regularly, guess what? We die. If blood doesn't flow out regularly, guess what? 
we die. We have to have the inflow and the output at the same time. What I'm trying to say is many of us are so busy on the output side that we're kind of dying a slow death emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, because we're not being replenished. We're not being fed. We're pouring into others, but who is, is pouring into us? So, so if that's maybe describing us even just a little bit, let me give you three very simple thoughts, simple takeaways, simple things you and I can do to try to help remedy that situation, to kind of help rebuild that foundation, that connection, that bonding that our lives are built on. So the, the first little thought is this, and uh, you know this already, this is nothing new, but just, just walk with me down this path. The first thing is this. You need to have a meeting with yourself, set an appointment with yourself, and have a conversation with yourself and say, self, there is a God and you are not him, <laughs> right? There is a God and I'm not God. In other words, we need to understand that, that God is the only one who is eternal, who is perfect, who is kind of self-fulfilled and, and perfect in unity and community, the, the Trinity and all that, right? We are designed to need some output coming in. We need the air, we need the food, we need interaction with others, right? We're not designed to exist on an island by ourselves. We are not like God in that respect. And so this confession, this you know, this admission we need to make is this. It's a self. There is a God, and we, I, you, we are not him, right? We need to be in relationship with God, and we confess we need to be in relationship with others, right? So that sounds so simple, but that, that can be life-changing and kind of paradigm-shifting, right? I have a need, a deep design need for God. I have a need, a deep design need to connect with other people, right? Simple, simple, simple but you got to start there. So the first little thing is a conversation with yourself. Self, talk to yourself, make an appointment, put it on your calendar, have a confab. There is a God and you are not him, but you need him and you need others. The second thing is this. It's related, okay? Second thought is this. When is the time and where is the place where intentionally, regularly, methodically, you meet with God. You connect with God. You, you bond to God, so to speak. Hold that thought. Back in Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning at verse 35, I, I shared this with some leaders in our church the other day. There's this amazing little short passage about Jesus and the disciples. He, he had just begun his public ministry. He, he'd had some days of teaching and miracles, and the crowds loved it. They were amazed at who Jesus was and, and what he could do. Uh, he and the disciples uh, finished ministry for a day. They, they spent the night somewhere. And it says, early in the morning, Jesus got up and went out by himself to some lonely, solitary place, and he spent time praying. You can go back and read the story again. Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning in about verse 35. Jesus went out by himself early in the morning to pray to his heavenly Father. Now, meanwhile, Peter and the disciples get up and they realize, hey, Jesus isn't here. They go looking for him. Eventually, they find him and they say, look, what are you doing out here? There's crowds back here. Come on, we've, we've got to go back and do the same thing we did yesterday. Healing and these miracles you did. Come on, let's go back, Jesus. And Jesus says, no, we've got to go on to another place that they might hear about the kingdom of God too. It's this amazing example at the beginning of Jesus' ministry how he, who is fully God and fully human, decided to take time intentionally away to connect to the heart of his heavenly Father and to remain at the center of the will of the heavenly Father, right? And if Jesus, who is both God fully and human fully, needs to do that, wow, how much more do I? How much more do we, right? Interesting thought. All of us need a place. All of us need a time. Maybe you're a morning person. God bless your hearts. Maybe you're a morning person, right? And you find time in the mornings to have your, your quiet time, your prayer time, your reading time with God. 
Maybe you're a late night owl person. Bless your hearts. Maybe your time at night is late in the evening hours, early in the a.m. To, to read, to pray, to, to devote to God. Maybe you're one of those people who does it right after lunch. I can't even imagine that. But I mean, whatever your kind of best time of the day is, what would it look like to set aside 10, 15, 20 minutes every day regularly and just spend some time in the Word, spend some time in prayer, spend some time just, just listening to God. It sounds so simple, right? We all think about this, but it's hard to keep doing that on an ongoing basis. I shared last week that one of the disciplines I've been taking on during pandemic is trying to uh, learn and memorize Scripture, N not for preaching, not for worship services, but just for me, just to do that. And what I found for me is that the rhythm I'm in right now is most mornings I get up and take the dog for a walk around the neighborhood, and then I come back home, and the dog and I sit on the back porch for 15 or 20 minutes, and we talk to each other, reflecting on the walk. Actually, I just sit in the rocking chair, and he does doggy things. And during that time, I get my phone out, and I, I put my Bible app on, and, and I read and try to memorize Scripture, right? So in the morning, in the cool, on the back porch, in the shade, that's kind of become kind of my devotional time. Will I do that in January when it's 10 degrees? I, it may be different then, right? But th there's, a re there's a rhythm to, to this part of, of life right now. What, where's your rhythm right now? Where is it you're spending time regularly, intentionally with, with God? I don't know if there's any baseball fans out there, but baseball season, the amended baseball season started two days ago, right? Our family, for the most part, three of the four of us are, uh, are Red fans, I, I won't tell you the one who's not a Reds fan, but her initials are A-G-A. -A. You can figure out maybe later who that perhaps might be. Um, but what happened is uh, the, the TV package we have dropped Fox Sports Ohio, so we, we can't watch the Reds games anymore. Pastor Richard, it's a travesty. So what do I do now if I want to, to, to follow the Reds? Well, what I've been doing is going out in my truck and turning on the AM station, there really was a thing called AM for those who are younger of a certain age, you know, that that was a thing, and you had to turn a dial and push buttons. And I, I go to AM 700 or AM 1300, and I can listen to the Reds on the radio, right? I can follow the games, right? But I have to tune in, I have to dial, and I have to connect. It's got to be intentional, right? We have to do the same thing with God. We've got to tune in, we've got to dial in, we've got to connect. It's got to be intentional. If it's a weekend and I want to find out the balance of my bank account, how many millions of dollars is there? Oh, wait, I think I lose a few zeros, right? I lose a bunch of zeros. If I want to find out over the weekend, I put on my computer, I turn on my phone app, and I log in, I connect, and I can see, see the money that's there or not there, depending on the week, right? You've got to tune in, you've got to connect. It's got to be intentional. It's the same thing in our faith life. Where are we tuning in? Where are we connecting? With the heart of the Heavenly Father and with the will of the Heavenly Father, right? So the first thing is this idea of have a confab with yourself. Tell yourself that you're not God, but you need God, and you need to be in relationship with other people as well. And then secondly, where is that place in that time? Kind of like Jesus got away. Where is that place in that time intentionally, regularly, where we're spending time connected and tuned in to the heart and the will of the Father? And the third and final thing is this. Just like we have to connect with God intentionally, we also need to be connected with other people intentionally. This is harder because of COVID, but with technology and with some creativity, it's still very, very doable. So think about this. Who is a person or a group of people that you regularly, not just once, but regularly can, can gather up with? And, and maybe it needs to be someone outside of your family or your coworkers, but someone you can just be very real with and talk about life hey, this is going on, and, and there's no judgment, no one's asking anything of you, but they're just listening, and you're listening to them. And you can ask questions, you can share life experience. Well, yeah, that happened to me, and this is what we did, or yeah, this is what I think I, I would do. But we need that kind of deep, personal, emotional connection also to, to be healthy and connect kind of horizontally with, with people around us. You know, if you're going to plant a tree, you don't just stick the tree in the dirt and then dip it in the water and then throw it out and say, you got to grow, right? No, you have to water it and you plant it in the dirt and then you water it regularly. It's a process that takes time. And our relationships with other people are like that too. A lot of people are planting gardens this year, right? You plant your garden, just walk away and leave it? No. 
You have to go back and pull the weeds and you have to go back and water and train up the vines and pick the fruit and pick the vegetables when they come, right? It's, it's an intentional, ongoing process. And guess what? It's the same thing as we nurture and grow relationships with other people. And maybe you can do it face-to-face, socially distanced, of course, or maybe it's a Zoom call or a phone call or FaceTime or whatever it is, right? But there's got to be that regular, ongoing, listening, giving, taking, receiving, sharing with, with other people, right? Where they're not expecting anything of you, but just listening to you and pouring into your lives. And you're listening to them and pouring into their lives as well. Three simple ideas to help kind of fix our foundations. Remind yourself you're not God, but you need God and you need relationships with others. Find a place, find a time just to connect with the heart and the will of your Heavenly Father. And then be intentional about gathering with other individuals, friends, and just let them speak life to you. And you listen and speak life back into them. Let me close with a story. So for uh, me and maybe for a lot of you this summer, we've been doing lots of projects, fix-up projects, and getting things kind of pulled back together, back in order. Well, this past week, it was time for me to do a couple projects on my old pickup truck. I've got an old truck, 25-year-old GMC 1500 Sierra pickup truck. There's not much clear coat left on it. Looks a little rough, but I love that old truck. I love that old truck, right? And so I noticed that the the taillights were having some problems. Uh, They weren't working. So it was time to kind of fix the taillights. So I did a little bit of research and went out and bought some parts and got my tools out one afternoon and took the taillight assemblies off the truck itself and unbolted, unscrewed everything, unplugged everything, took things apart from inside things. Now I I got them all back together, don't worry, right? It works now. But I had this experience on the left taillight you know, after 25 years back there, things were kind of rusted and corroded. And one of the bolts that I was trying to kind of uh, ratchet out of there was stuck so tight that as I ratcheted it out, it actually broke the plastic post that it was going down into holding things together. Now, Pastor Richard, I didn't think that was a problem at first. I thought, oh, well, this is no problem. Well, it turned out it was. But I didn't know that at the time, so I took everything apart had to replace what's called the circuit board and some new bulbs, got that all done. As I was putting it all back together and getting ready to assemble it, I realized that the place where it had broken on the post, it was not going to work because the bolt has to go in. It pulls this whole circuit board in line with the rest of the lens. It makes an electrical connection as well as a physical connection. And with that one post broken, it wasn't going to work. So I ran back in, or I I drove back in. I drove another car, not that car, back into the auto parts store. I said, hey, do you have a replacement part? They didn't have one. They could order one. It would take a few days. But I wanted this fixed that night. So I had this crazy idea. I thought, I bet we've got some glue at home. I bet I can fix it with glue. So I get back home. I went looking for the super glue. Only it wasn't super glue. It was called Gorilla glue, but I couldn't think of gorilla for some reason. So I was walking around the house going, Hey, where's the monkey glue? And they're looking at monkey glue. There's no monkey glue. Where's the monkey glue? Well, finally we found the monkey glue, which is really the gorilla glue, which is really the super glue. You get the idea. And I, I find this little piece and I put it back together and I glue it and I, I wait the minimum required two hours for it to bond and set up. And then the most gentle I've ever used tools in my life, I held my breath. As I put the little bolt back in and ratcheted it down ever so gently, put the piece together, lined it up, put the piece back in the back of the truck, cranked the engine, and guess what? It worked. It worked. The Gorilla Glue, Monkey Glue, Super Glue, the glue worked. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, but I was so surprised. And my takeaway from all that was this. You needed the sticky to make the lights come on. That was my Physics takeaways, you got to have the sticky to make the lights come on, right? In other words, the glue made the post work, made the bolt work, sealed the electrical connection, made the whole taillight work. You had to have the sticky to make the lights come on. And I thought, wow, that is like me, and that is like you. We need to have the sticky, the bonding, that connection to make the lights come on spiritually, psychologically, emotionally, and every other part of our lives. The first thing, have that confab with yourself 
and say, self, there is a God and you're not him. But you're designed to need God and you're designed to need other people. And then, after that, when is your time, where is your place to connect with God? And then, who is that person, that group of people that regularly you can meet with to feed into their lives and they can feed and invest into your life? I like the way I say it. You need the sticky to make the lights come on. I think Jesus said it better when he said, Holy Father, protect them in your name so that they may be one as we are one. That they, and that's us, we it may be one as Jesus and the Father are one. We're one with each other and we're one with God. That's that whole foundation piece we're talking about. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Pray with me. Our Father and our God, thank you for designing us in such a way that where there are problems, Lord, we can be fixed. And where we are empty, we can be refilled. And Father, where we have needs, you can come around us and bring other people around us to help heal us and bless us and set us back on the path. Lord, convict our hearts to have that place and that time to connect with you. And Lord, show us the people. If we don't have that person, Lord, reveal that person to us that we can meet with and we can listen to and they can invest in us and we can invest in them. Father, we want to have that strong foundation, that strong life, a life that's a blessing to us and Lord, a life that's a blessing to somebody else. All these things we ask and all these things we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen and amen. As we close out our worship service, let's sing the hymn together, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood. And all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Well, friends, we thank you for joining us for online worship today. We'll do it again next week and hope you can join us next week as well. I want to give you a, a benediction, a kind of a final blessing as we uh, depart from this time of worship. And uh, this is a, uh, a version, if you will, uh, from Psalm 121. Uh, let me read part of the psalm over us as a, as a blessing today. Hear these words. May the Lord keep you from all evil, and may the Lord bless and keep your life. The Lord keep you in your going and your coming, both now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.